What's your take? What's your response to that Democratic official deliberately announcing that they're going to defy court orders um, and count uh, these provisional ballots? Well, I'm, again, I'm not going to chase every kinds of quotes, things like that, because I think you just pointed out that it it refers to about 115 ballots, and that's not going to have an impact on this race at, the, at this point. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and apparently we've got a large amount of uh, potential drama going on at Mar-a-Lago as Elon Musk erupted at a accused mole inside of Trump's new administration. It wouldn't be the first time Trump's campaign uh, or Trump's administration in 2016, 2017 was literally filled with anti-Trumpers, moles who would leak stuff, people who would undermine him. So I tend to believe Elon when he uh, calls somebody out for this. Also, some interesting updates on Pennsylvania and some other uh, counting shenanigans that, by the way, it's been almost two weeks since the election and there are several states still counting ballots. I, I don't know what on earth their possible excuse would be given Florida had finished their counting that night. Uh, it's completely absurd where Pennsylvania now the Supreme Court is siding with Republicans Democrats are ignoring it and still counting more. It is really, really suspicious. Want to shout out uh, our perfect Christmas gift. The quarter presents the uh, mega inspired cookbook for Christmas. It's full of hilarious meme recipes. It's the perfect uh, uh, gift for you, for somebody you love, for the mega person in your family. Uh, it's every joke or every recipe is not only delicious, but also hilarious meme stuff like, you know, um, mega Kings, red wave punch, a threat to our democ cookies and much more. We also have the summer edition available. The combo pack makes the perfect gift tailgates for trump.com slash store link in the description pin comment as well. Elon Musk blasts Trump aid in dinner blow up over cabinet at Mar-a-Lago as mega golden boy is targeted. Now, certainly there's a lot of questions around, you know, how much time Elon is spending, you know, next, tr next to Trump and at Mar-a-Lago and things of that nature. I do understand why some people who are in government are questioning it. I also understand why you might want to have probably one of the smartest men alive uh, at your right hand. Um, but it's creating a lot of envy. While for a while, Donald Trump's transition kept up a record setting pace with top cabinet picks being named against a backdrop of column consensus, but the knives are out now with advisors leaking against each other to the press amid the scramble to parachute allies into plum jobs. Winning helped make everything better for a bit, but this is still politics and there are always scores to settle and access to grind, a source familiar with the workings of Trump's inner circle. In the most widely publicized example, Axios was tipped off. Gee, I wonder by who. You know, if, if Elon says there's a mole and then Axios is covering it, doesn't that prove him right? Apparently, Tesla founder Elon and Trump legal advisor, advisor Boris Epstein had a major blow-up during dinner at Mar-a-Lago. The report claimed that Musk bristled at Epstein's influence on cabinet picks and accused him of leaking details to the media, a charge he vociferously denied. At the same time, Musk's new role as first buddy to Trump has irked others in the circle and hopes he falls out of favor with the boss who likes there to be only likes to be the only center of attention. A transition source, of course, played down the story saying that Epstein and Musk had a good relationship and then dined frequently at the same table. Even so, it comes as Trump's loyalists express irritation at Musk's growing influence 
as well as his public comments on appointments and policy. I mean, I, for one, am uh, happy about Elon advising Trump. I think, uh, in general, Elon is very smart. I haven't agreed with every decision he's ever made, but I do think it's pretty interesting. Um, the the way that a lot of these swampites, these swamp monsters have been like reacting to his presence there. Uh, at the same time, other advisors are going after F. F- Epstein, who is seen as a key player in promoting Matt Gates for attorney general. He assembled Trump's legal team for the New York criminal case, and two of those lawyers have landed top Justice Department decisions. The result is a bitter wave of briefing against him, with some insiders claiming he has too much influence and is on the way out of the circle. I mean, I don't know about all that, but you see Elon Musk saying good move, you know, Javier Miley is slashing import taxes, all this kind of stuff. People don't like that Elon's weighing in on stuff. Musk went public this weekend by criticizing one of the front runners for the post of, of uh, and praised a foreign leader's decision to cut tariffs at a time when Trump is planning an administration built on higher import duties. He pushed for Howard Lutnick, Trump's transition co-chair, to be named Treasury Secretary instead of Scott Besant, who had been talked up by the president-elect in past. My view, for what it's worth, is that Besson is a business-as-usual choice, whereas Howard Lutnick will actually enact change, he wrote on X. Business-as-usual is driving America bankrupt, so we need to change this one way or another. Look, Elon probably is used to getting his way on literally everything in his companies. That's probably not going to be how this shakes out in terms of you know, the Trump presidency and what's going on there. But, uh, you know... The other thing is, at some point, if you're going to advise Trump privately, you probably shouldn't publicly disagree with him on Twitter. I don't think Trump's going to like that. I'm sorry, X. Yes, there are signs he have, there, there are signs he have outside his welcome. He has to be careful, set a source close to the campaign. There's only room for one president and hasn't gone unnoticed that he's generating a lot of headlines. Others said the briefings against Musk were not based in fact and pointed out that Trump took the Tesla founder to Madison Square Garden with him for the UFC fight on Saturday. Um, One said that the world's richest man had no interest in pushing for certain jobs, unlike others in Trump's orbit. Uh, All the leaks must be removed from the administration. You can't run a successful business if information is getting leaked. All entrepreneurs know this. A political administration is no different Loose lips sink ships and undermine efforts. No skullduggery. I mean, I would argue that's probably real. Um, I, I would say that's probably real. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's hard to argue against this uh, against it. I mean, I'm sure there are. Um, I'm sure there are a new innumerable reasons. Innumerable, innumerable reasons why you'd want to hold people accountable for this kind of stuff. Also, Trump campaign official says Pennsylvania Democrats will face jail time over ballot recount. They will go to jail. Chris Lasivita posted to X. This is now going on a lot of with the um, you know nonsense going on with uh, the with the election. People still counting votes weeks after weeks after weeks after week. Uh, and it's it's wild to me. You know, it's absolutely wild that this would be, you know, the case. Uh, it, it's wild. Uh, they will go to jail. Trump's co-campaign manager posted on X. La Savita was reacting to a social media post touting Washington Free Beacon article for detailing that Democratic Senator Bob Casey endorsed Democratic Bucks County Commissioner Diane Ellis don't really care last year during her campaign for the position. Uh, I think we all know that the court doesn't matter anymore in this country. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say so. Um, it, it's wild to me. It makes me que- um, it makes a question everything. You know, why can't these ballots be counted in a single night? Florida's not exactly exactly a small state. Um, you know, Pennsylvania in the midst of a ballot recount 
after Casey refused to concede his race to Senate-elect David McCormick earlier this month. McCormick, McCormick's unofficial margin of victory stands at roughly 17,000 votes, or 0.5, the threshold required under Pennsylvania law to trigger an automatic recount, which is fair. Uh, this is fair. People violate laws anytime they want. They say, if you look at this, Pennsylvania high court sides with Republicans on misdated ballots. A new ruling on Monday, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court directed all the state's county election officials not to count certain mail-in ballots for this year's election that arrived on time but in envelopes without the correct dates handwritten by voters. The order prompted by a request from the Republican National Committee and Pennsylvania's Republican Party in this latest development in a long-running legal battle over what to do when absentee voters don't follow an artifact of the state's election rules. The provision which requires a voter to sign and date their ballot outer return envelope has drawn a tangle of lawsuits. I mean, it's pretty simple to follow the rules. You have to do that. If you didn't have all these absentee ballots, you just wouldn't have that problem. Um, This is probably going to hurt Bob Casey. I'm going to guess. And, uh, you know, that, that's the situation. But you have Fetterman anyway. Breaking John Fetterman says, who cares that the Democrats are violating court orders? Um, uh, behind uh, Dave McCormick, uh, Democratic officials in at least one key county, uh, Bucks County, voted to count about 115 provisional ballots um, that miss, are missing a signature, despite the Pennsylvania Supreme Court previously ruling that those are invalid. I want you to take a listen to how one Democratic Bucks County commissioner justified uh, her actions. I think we all know that precedent by a court doesn't matter anymore in this country, and people violate laws anytime they want. So for yeah. me, if I violate this law, it's because I want a court to pay attention to it. So the Washington Post editorial board called that, quote, corrosive to democracy, unquote, and said, quote, County officials do not get to decide whether a legal requirement is material and must be followed. Courts do, and they have spoken clearly, unquote. Um, What's your take, what's your response to that Democratic official deliberately announcing that they're going to defy court orders um, and count uh, these provisional ballots? Well, again, I'm not going to chase every kind of quotes, things like that, because I think you just pointed out that it it refers to about 115 ballots, and that's not going to have an impact on this race at at this point. Fair, but why are you breaking the rules? Why are you counting ballots when you were told you shouldn't? Very, very interesting. Obviously, ballots are still being counted in California, all this kind of stuff, which just opens up a lot of conversations and questions around fraud. I will continue to cover this as uh, most of the shenanigans that people will try to try will will now be happening after everyone's looking elsewhere. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a like on it. If you haven't, subscribe or follow down below. We'll talk to you again real soon.